Hi everyone and welcome to Qualys' uh, next webinar. Uh, we will talk about running time lapse and uh, this session will be approximately 30 minutes. Uh, we will divide the session into uh, some explanation of the background and the system and then we will do a live test demo uh, with the participants then. And after that we will go through uh, our online web report with some new feature. Um, I'm Patrick Elmström, I'm Market Director in Europe for Qualysys and uh, on, on my side I, we have Vincent Fahano, uh, our PhD and biomechanical expert that uh, will answer the questions and uh, Sten will uh, run on the treadmill. So let's jump to the presentation. Before we do that uh, I want to be sure that all of you participants uh, can handle uh, the GoToMeeting tool. Uh, top, you can show hide con control panel. You can go to full screen. Uh, if you can't hear anything, please check your audio settings. And if you have any questions, uh, you can enter them in the bottom uh, in the pane. And Vincent and uh, Nils Betzler that are attending us as well in the pane list uh, will try to answer all the questions during the webinar. If uh, there, there's a lot of questions, uh, we will get back to you afterwards uh, through emails or similar. Okay, so I'll be talking about a running analysis within 15 minutes and it starts, it starts six years ago, 2014, and we start to investigate, can we use our research tool for the people and for the coaches on a daily basis. And that means more or less that doing Qualysys uh, mocap system as easy as possible within a specific time. So we start uh, doing that. Uh, we collaborate with some running coaches and some physiotherapists. And because we are a technical guy, so we need the help from the coaches and the physiotherapists actually to understand what we should deliver. One goal was to use as few markers as possible but still got a uh, research uh, perspective and validation of the biomechanical calculation. And of course, uh, we used our uh, uh, old path structure or the module structure that we call it today. And uh, in the end, we need to find a way to present the data in a really nice way. And then we start to develop an online web report. And uh, the main goal from the beginning was to do everything within 60 minutes. But that includes exercise, follow-up, uh, advice, running on the treadmill again. So there was several things, but the running test doesn't take more than 50 minutes, but we will show it. To do a similar setup like we will do today, you need the recommendation is nine Qualysys cameras could be Micros, M1, M3, M5, or uh, the Plus series. We highly recommend nine cameras uh, because when you have nine cameras, you will almost have 100% fill level of all markers. You can use eight, seven, six, but then perhaps you need to gap filling information. Two Micros video are preferable, one in the frontal and one in the sagittal plane. Ordinary accessories, computers, could be laptop or desktop, QTM, and you need the running module, the license. And uh, you can uh, select between the uh, QDE or the Visual 3D version. Uh, I think uh, we explained that in previous webinars. Uh, the protocol could be used on a treadmill or running on flat ground. Before we start with measurement, it's really important to optimize everything. And of course, uh, when you start up the system first, check for reflections. If you have some reflection close to the treadmill or the running area, you should try to avoid it. And uh, you can use uh, different uh, methods. Uh, you can divide the cameras into different groups, uh, exposure delays, or you can tape or remove the reflections because when you're doing measurement in three, 400 frames per second and you have reflection really close to the shoe or the feet, uh, the markers could actually be mixed up. Calibrate the system. 
uh, we recommend that you do it once a day or before you start to do several sessions. Sometimes it's uh, necessary to do that uh, between, uh, for example, after lunch. And then prepare all the markers and coach tape. The coach tape will use that quite often, actually, to tape if you have reflective shoes or if you have some uh, trousers or shirt with reflective material on. So the test protocol, we will show it live. Uh, as you can see, you see the screen here. We have different steps. So now we will start to do the live demo. Uh, with me, I have Steen. Welcome, Steen. Hello. Hello. So I start opening QTM. Uh, what I do here, I add a person to this one. I put in the ID, I just put some numbers. Put in Stan's name, mail. mail. I'm just looking at the watch, 2005. Perfect. Date of birth, I just put something. And the height then? 180. 180. Yeah. Yeah. 180, wait. 85. 85, and then you can, I can actually put in if he's amateur or advanced. Injury, injury history as well, personal best. Uh, I often use some kind of indication of uh, the race pace on the runners. For example, it's in running 10K at full, uh, in full five minutes, then I know exactly what I should put the treadmill on, the speed on. When I've done that, I add a running session. And the running session is unique for each session. So I just put up some information and I click OK. So now we are live. And the, the first thing we are doing is actually to put on the markers. So when we put on the markers, you can of course use our marker guide. We have a predefined marker setups. We have a lot of explanation, the static and dynamic files. You can use the system both for lower body and full body analysis. For some people, it could be quite hard to know exactly where to place the markers. And therefore, we have included these more detailed descriptions with pictures exactly where you put the markers. Some of the markers are more critical than other ones uh, because some markers are just tracking markers, and some others are uh, it's being used for uh, joint center calculations. Things that start uh, with the feet, we put on the uh, Two on the front, two, front foot, and the calcaneus, and the ankle. Most common is that the knee joint could be quite hard to define sometimes, but if you're quite skilled, you can palpate it quite easily. If you're doing the running analysis on a daily basis or on a weekly basis, it's really good if the same person attaching the markers all the time, or if you are two person, then you actually do it uh, every second time and teach each other, because after six months or something, you start putting them wrong or uh, you are not so correct. So then it's really important to control that. As you can see, QTM, the person start being visible. One important thing as well, when you're doing running analysis uh, uh, with athletes or people that are really well trained, sometimes they get really sweaty. So be sure that the person are drying the skin. That means don't have any lotion before. Um, 
or uh, sometimes uh, similar products are not really beneficial. So do this before you're doing the warm up. Sometimes you need to shave and to you that uh, using the system for chemical gate analysis knows that you can use a shaver and uh, and uh, clean uh, clean off the skin. How should you be wearing the clothes when you're doing the running analysis? We recommend that you just using trousers, short trousers. Uh, for male, uh, no top, and female, uh, preferable a sports bra. Some people are not so, um, they don't like to take the clothes off. And if you use a shirt, please use a tight shirt that are not flickering or moving the, moving the marker so much. To put on the markers, take the longest time I would say in the process here. So Vincent is really skilled. Uh, I would say three to five minutes for a skilled person to do everything in the correct way. If you're not so skilled, uh, up to 10 minutes in the, in the beginning. We're using 35 markers. That's correct, Vincent. 35 markers. And many of our customers actually put 35 markers in a box and then have four or five different boxes. You can just grab the box. Uh, important as well that you're cleaning the markers because they, they got filthy after a while. And uh, when you see the system are not tracking or seeing the markers, it's most obvious that you need to clean the marker or replace them. We had some questions during the pandemic here, how we actually can clean the markers uh, related to the corona, but uh, soap and, um, and uh, hand warm water, that is what we recommend. And now it's just the head left. As you can see in the QTM, uh, the A model works quite well. Uh, the A model needs the right numbers of markers to work perfectly. Uh, when I run the system, I use uh, the aim and the, and the bones between the markers to check so all the markers are attached. Great. Thanks, Vincent. So, Christian, please stand on the treadmill, arms down, just look forward, and I go to the path pane on the left side. I click on the static trial, and I will do a capture. The static trial will be for one second, and uh, we use this static one as a definition of uh, the biomechanical uh, calculations. I go to the preview mode. And uh, we know that Stin are quite skilled in running. Uh, the speed you would like to run the system, it depends on the purpose, of course. Is, is it performance or is it rehabilitation? But now I think we go for 8, 10, and 12. We start the treadmill in 8 minutes per hour. Normally, you should let the person run on the treadmill for two, three, perhaps four minutes before you do your measurements. You can adapt uh, to the treadmill and uh, understood. Each uh, capture will be during 10 seconds and can collect the circuit for the running cycles. Depends on the speed, of course. So we run on eight minutes per hour. And we will do a capture of 10 seconds. After the session, I need to put in uh, the speed of the treadmill, 8 kilometers. And then I just look on the right side, and I can see the fill level is 100% for all of them. Open a new preview, ask him to increase the speed to 
10 kilometers per hour. Let him run uh, for 20, 25 seconds. Click on the capture button. We will be doing a new recording in 10 seconds. Of course, you can do measurement between different tools, different conditions, instead of different suits. 10 kilometers. And then I just check the signal then on the right side, 100%. Go to the third level or for third speed. Run for 10 seconds. Well, the new capture. Thanks, Dan. That's about 20 minutes now. Just check the data. We have one 99.6%. Um, you can actually do the analysis if you have down to 80% fill level without gap filling information. Something like that. So you don't need to have 100%. If you have 85, 90%, that's good enough. So, the next, I click the, the processing button here, and uh, the system will start exporting information and uh, sending it to call assist by mechanical engine. And I will uh, let the headset to Vincent. Thank you, Patrick. Hi, everyone. So now I'm gonna talk a bit more about uh, What's happening next? Uh, so I mean the the web report, of course. So QTM is still processing the data right now, as you can see. And uh, now the web report has been uploaded. So I will just it open. It was open on the on the other page, so I can open it now. So it automatically upload the report. Uh, I will just claim it. And uh, now we can go through quickly the, the web report. So the web report uh, for running and for the other ones, it looks quite this, it's very similar. So it's the same framework. Uh, so on the right side of uh, the report, you can find all the data with all the trials. So you have trial one, two, three, since then was running uh, during three measurements. You can also deselect and then the results update automatically and reselect it if you want to. Um, you have also a 3D viewer that you can see underneath here. Uh, and so if you play the measurement, you can see the avatar. So you can pan, you can rotate the camera if you want to. And of course, you have what's important, I guess, for you. Uh, it's the results about the running analysis. So the first uh, part of the web report starts always the same way. Yeah, you start with like a, a summary of uh, the, in this case, the running analysis. So we have like a few uh, parameters, like the number of steps, the cadence, the number of steps per minute, and each dot uh, represent each trial. So if you see here, I'm hovering over like each trial and it says like, which trial are you hovering uh, on? You have also step length, stride length, and all these parameters that are very specific to running. So it's a good way to start the analysis. You have also a button for the table where you can see all these results in a, uh, in the form of a table. So they are all gathered here. And once again, they are, you have each result per trial or the result per trial sorry i'm sorry so when you, yes can you hear me could you just double check your microphone settings that you are on yes. the headset we have a yes. few people who can't hear you very well uh -huh. yeah. let's check on audio that the microphone yeah. is the, so i think now it's better now it's better much better thank you yes thank you so yeah so now i think you can hear me very uh, much better 
so if I continue about the running uh, report, you have, uh, if you scroll down, you will have, for each uh, part of the body, you will have curves, and you can switch between uh, trials and consistency. So trial means, means like we have an average curve per trial, and consistency means you will have all the cycles for uh, the three trials or the three measurements. So you have that, and so you have that for each body part. So you see, and you can go directly, if you want to go specifically to directly to the arms, you can just directly click here. And you will uh, go directly to the graph that you, that you want to see instead of scrolling. And you can also merge left and right if you want to see left and right in the same kernel, if you want to see some asymmetries, for instance. Uh, so you can do that. So it's a lot easier visually at least to see if the right and the left uh, uh, parameters are quite symmetrical. And uh, finally, I would like to, maybe I will switch now to this PowerPoint, uh, the presentation that Patrick started. Uh, I will uh, show you like the two latest uh, feature that we implemented in the web report. So I will start with uh, the export to PDF. So now in the web report, you have this new feature, uh, which is uh, called export to PDF. So you can find it here on this right pane here. And uh, you have you have like a section called export. Um, so as soon as you open that one, you can see that the status is saying uh, generating PDF. So the the web platform or the yeah the web platform is uh, generating the PDF now, based on the uh, on the running report um, that you have. So it takes a bit of time, and uh, unfortunately, the PDF is not ready. So what I can do now instead, it's like go to the web report and look at the, um, if you go to qualities.com or like report.qualities.com, you can find uh, all the different reports that you can access uh, without any login. So you can have access to like demo report. This is what we call here. And you can see like the running report, for instance. And what you can see now, you can have the PDF. And if you download the PDF, this is how it looks like. So for each athlete, if you want, instead of having the web report uh, um, on, the web, on the web browser, you can have it as a PDF version. So you have all the curves. And uh, the first part here, uh, it's where you have entered your feedback in the web report. So this is this pane that you can see here. So if you want to enter feedback, you can enter feedback and they will appear in the PDF. And then it's the report that is uh, shown uh, that you saw before, but in the form of, uh, of a PDF uh, report this, in, this, uh, in this case. So all the curves are here with the tables also that are underneath uh, each graph uh, that you can see on the web report online. And uh, you have that for uh, all the curves and graphs that you have um, available. Uh, online. The second feature, it's uh, the comparison report. So now, or it's been a, a few months already, but uh, one thing very important and very requested by your users is to be able to compare um, different athletes or compare, compare the, the same runner, um, but between different sessions. So we have the possibility to do that directly on the, on the web platform. So if I'm going back uh, to the web platform here, so I'm going back to test results and um, you can compare a report directly uh, from here if you want. And the only thing that you have to do is to uh, add data. So you can add data if you want to, and you can search by name. 
And uh, in this case, uh, we have already made a comparison report uh, previously uh, in this demo report, where the comparison is made between uh, this person, Astrid, and another person. If I click here, I can see which name is it. Yeah, it's Albin. So the only thing that we did is like we just added the, the data here, searching for that, and we uh, by clicking on compare, it's appearing here, and you have your comparison already done. And in this case, you can see you have two types of curve. You have the solid line, which represents uh, Astrid, and uh, the dashed line uh, is the second report that you are using for the comparison. In this case, it's Albin. And now you can visually compare all the data if you want to uh, because now all both reports are merged and all the results from both athletes are uh, displayed uh, in the same uh, at the same location so you can see that now you have for the summary you have both results from Astrid and Albin you can look at differences between them in terms of cadence in terms of uh, other parameters like the contact time, for instance, or the flight time or the ratio between those. And it's the same, uh, of course, for the curves. So all the data that are in the report from both uh, runners, they are merged. And that's why you can see like everywhere, you can see the data from each of them. And once again, the solid line is like the first uh, report that you use, as three in this case. And the second one uh, here is the dashed line, it's the second athlete, in this case, it's Albin. And you can see that in the graph, and you can see that also, as you can see, you can see it in the in the table underneath the graphs. So you have the results from both Alstrid and Albin. So you are able to compare both of them if you want to. And once again, you can use that not to compare only two runners. You can also use that to compare the same runner between different sessions if you want to. As soon as you have like the reports, you can compare whatever report you want. Yeah. So that's about it for me. I will just switch quickly to uh, the web report and to Patrick again. So thank you very much, everyone, for listening to, to me. And Patrick will say a few words. Thank you, Vincent. So um, time to summarize everything. Uh, when we start uh, the webinar, we talked about 15 minutes. Uh, I watched the clock and I think it was 11 minutes from still entering until we had the web report. And then, of course, you have a lot of time with the explanation in, in uh, the web report, exercise, everything around that. But it just, we just want to show how efficient and quick the system is actually to run. Um, afterwards, we will put up uh, this webinar on our webpage on colleges.com slash webinars and you can find all other webinars there as well. Uh, don't forget to use our Q Academy. We have a um, couple of hundreds or more than 100 uh, tutor video tutorials that you can use. And uh, please sign up for the next webinar. It will be the 4th of June and uh, we will talk about gate markerless. So please visit colleges.com slash webinars and sign up afterwards. I would like to uh, thank uh, Vincent and Sten for the help today and uh, thanks for taking time to uh, be with us. Take care.